We are NBC Boston. And right now on NBC Boston, exclusive information in the search for an escaped prisoner. The new clues uncovered by investigators that are helping police track him down. Plus, a baby nearly dies after being exposed to a powerful synthetic drug. This afternoon, the questions for police as they investigate and... The people helping the residents displaced by this fire in Lynn now need your help. I'll explain coming up. This is NBC Boston News at 4. But we begin with new details in the search for an escaped inmate. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shannon Miller. And I'm Joy Lim Nakrin. Right now on NBC Boston News at 4 o'clock, we have exclusive information that could bring authorities closer to capturing an escaped prisoner. NBC Boston's Perry Russell has been working his stories ever since, his sources ever since this story broke. He joins us live from Framingham with exclusive details you'll see only right here on NBC Boston. Perry. They are getting much closer to finding this man. A police source telling us the car Morales stole was found in Framingham. Exclusive video of police hunting down James Morales in Framingham. State and federal officers working in the dark. K-9, that's the K-9 police officer was here. A police source telling NBC Boston this search was at Morales' ex-girlfriend's house after the car he stole was found a block away. But you asked them what was going on, they wouldn't tell you anything, right? They wouldn't tell you anything? They didn't, so if we didn't know, if we didn't see on Facebook and stuff like that, that there was a guy missing, I put it together and told her about it. I was like, yeah, they're probably looking for this guy. Neighbors say investigators have been coming back several times throughout the day, staying for hours. I actually commented to the, to the state police that I was nervous because I have children in the house. I said, is there something that I need to be concerned about? And he's like, you know, he's like, well, yeah, we have, we're looking for somebody, and but he didn't really elaborate. On New Year's Eve, Morales escaped from the Wyatt Detention Center, a private high security prison in Central Falls, Rhode Island. The start of a mad dash that leaves police scrambling to find this dangerous prisoner. My wife was going to work that day, and she was sitting in her car. Could she? He could have came up to her. Coming up new at 6, police are also investigating what happened at that prison, and that could land other people in serious trouble. Live in Framingham, Perry Russell, NBC Boston. Thanks a lot, Perry. And right now on NBC Boston, a 10-month-old baby recovering in the hospital after being exposed to fentanyl, a very dangerous opioid which can be deadly. That baby stopped breathing twice because of it, and now an investigation is underway. NBC Boston's Alicia Rodriguez joining us live now from Methuen with the latest on this story. Alicia. Good afternoon. That baby girl almost died over the weekend after she somehow ingested that powerful synthetic drug fentanyl. It has been used recently by many people, many dealers to cut heroin, a very potentially deadly drug. Now, Methuen police say that they were actually called to a home here on Treetop Way on Saturday for a baby in distress. They showed up, found that baby girl barely breathing. She was rushed to Lawrence General Hospital, where actually twice she stopped breathing and had to be revived both times. Even small amounts, trace amounts on, um, on an individual that small uh, could prove to be deadly. The mother did go to the hospital with the baby, but does not have custody of that child right now. DCF is involved in this investigation. Of course, the big question now is how did this baby come in contact with fentanyl? Coming up at 6, I'll have a closer look at this investigation. Reporting live in Methuen, Alicia Rodriguez, NBC Boston. Thanks a lot, Alicia. Want to turn to early warning weather now taking a live look out at the Boston skyline over the Zacom. You know, it looks gloomy out there. It is dry. However, there is rain on the way. To be fair, it's getting dark outside, so that doesn't add to the, <laughs> well, that, that's part of it. <laughs> to the excitement outside. But so it goes. Meteorologist Pete Bouchard joining us now to look at the forecast. Hey, Pete. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Joy. Yeah, this is one of those cases, too, where the day is getting a little bit longer. I want to make note of that. And today we did see the clouds rolling in. Tomorrow we'll see the rain rolling in. We'll go from showers to a steadier rain and a heavier rain, too. It ramps up in the day. Gusty winds, too. This is a coastal storm. You could call it a nor'easter if you want. The winds will be out of the northeast. However, that kind of brings to, vision, to mind, you know, those visions of uh, heavy snow and those gusty winds. Not seeing that. We're going to see all water here. 50s return by midweek, and then the much colder air will follow. 
there's warmth all across the Ohio Valley in the deep south. So that's why as the system rolls up from the deep south, it brings some of that air. And there's not a lot of cold in place. Boston's 40 degrees. It's colder in Caribou, but that air is not coming our way. We've been teased by showers that were down over Rhode Island. We did get a few down through the Cape and the islands. Just a couple of sprinkles, just a cloudy, raw day. Really, the first part was okay. This arm of rain actually reaches out over the fish and we miss it. So we're dry for the most part tonight, other than a couple of sprinkles that may be popping up. So your overnight forecast keeps us mostly cloudy to overcast and our temps saunter back through the mid and upper 30s and that's about it. Not seeing any icing, not seeing any uh, real cold. And then tomorrow back in those mid 40s. We'll talk about the forecast, how wet it is on Tuesday, yada, yada, yada. And then beyond that, how about a spring-like day for midweek? That's ahead. That and the yada yada yada. We'll take it, Pete. Thank you much. We'll see you soon. Some breaking news to tell you about right now. Live pictures here. That is a horse there. Rescuers trying to save that horse that was stuck in some ice in Templeton. You can see now they were able to pull it out of the ice and take it to some dry ground here. Sky Ranger arriving on the scene here. That is the view that you're looking at right now. Horse moving around a bit. It appears to be okay. They're obviously working on that horse to make sure that they can recover and, and that they'll be just okay. But again, that horse was stuck in some ice. You can imagine the temperature at 40 degrees. Things kind of soft out there uh, on the water. So we we will uh, continue to follow this, but good news is the horse appears to be okay. They're putting some warming blankets on her right now, and uh, we'll check in from Sky Ranger again when we have a little bit more information. Also this afternoon, a second person has been found dead. One person still missing after a devastating fire in Holyoke. This was a tragic beginning to the new year. This five alarm fire displaced dozens of families yesterday morning. First victim was found after the fire, while the second was found later Sunday night. A GoFundMe page has been set up to get them back on their feet. City leaders also dispelled rumors that the fire department was understaffed at the time of the fire. I think the fire department responded uh, within a minute. I think the biggest challenge is with this fire that we can confirm that there was a delay in the, uh, the calling of the fire uh, so that the fire department, once they got the call, they responded in under a minute and uh, the fire department was effectively staffed. All right, so the cause of this incredible fire still under investigation. And in Northboro, a home is a total loss after a fire there. Fire crews battled a raging fire this morning. A Sky Ranger capturing this video from over the scene. This is on Crestwood Drive. You can see the heavy smoke, flames pouring from the window there. Two people were home at the time. Fortunately, they were not hurt in this. Still waiting for word on what may have caused this fire. And crews still trying to figure out what caused this large New Year's Day apartment fire. This happened in Lynn. Raging fire here. Red Cross helping the dozens who had to be evacuated from that building. But now the Red Cross is asking for your help. NBC Boston's Alicia Palumbo joining us now live from Lynn to explain. Alicia? Well, as you've been reporting, this fire here in Lynn is one of several fires we've had here in Massachusetts over the past few weeks. And with so many people displaced, Red Cross resources are being stretched thin. I've never, I've never seen this kind of support. Donations poured into the Lynn Museum Lynn Arts Building Monday to help out Nicole Komen and more than 60 of her neighbors displaced by this five alarm fire on West Baltimore Street in Lynn Sunday. They all get out safely, but the need now is great. We don't have nothing right now. We lose everything we have. Brothers McCleo and Bill Tulo and their two daughters spent the night at this Red Cross shelter inside Lynn Classical High School. What better than this than sleeping outside in the street? a cold place is way better than us being outside. The big thing people are working on now is making sure that these folks have transitional housing and then ultimately permanent housing. But with so many large fires over the past few weeks in Cambridge, Methuen, Charlestown and elsewhere, Red Cross donations have been spread very thin. These disasters really happen every single day around the state and our volunteers are out there and it's the donations that people make to the Red Cross that helps get these people that are affected by these home fires and disasters back on their feet. And that help means the world to these fire victims. I'm blown away. I, I, I don't think it's hit me yet that I lost everything because I just see so much love and like people here willing to help me. And when we ran into the governor and his wife earlier today, they were dropping off donations for those fire victims. But the governor also stressed the need to make those direct donations to the Red Cross. 
We're live in Lynn, Alicia Palumbo, NBC Boston. Yeah, the help is always needed. Thanks, Alicia. All lanes open once again on the Mass Pike in Alston after major disruptions because of a flip tractor trailer. Sky Ranger captured the scene earlier this morning showing major traffic backups. The left two lanes were closed, forcing cars into one lane during the height of the morning commute. There was also a report of a minor injury. Police are still investigating what exactly caused this. All right, take a look at the center of your screen. That white figure there is actually a man who was tracked down in the woods by state troopers and charged with his fifth OUI. John Layton was arrested Saturday after a trooper found a crashed car abandoned on the ramp of Route 25 in Wareham. With the help of the MSP Air Wing, police found Layton in the woods. He is now facing other charges as well, including larceny and driving with a revoked license. And the afternoon commute well underway. Of course, it's a holiday, so maybe not as many people out on the roads, but let's get to Natasha Verma monitoring the traffic. Still a little bit busy out there, though. Hey, Joy, that's absolutely right. So we are seeing some moderate delays uh, at this time, and you saw that flip truck on the Mass Pike this morning. Despite the holiday, we did see a lot of issues, but things starting to wind down and calm down. We'll take you straight to the maps again. The Zagan Bridge into Boston, really no major delays this morning. Do we have the maps? We'll take them, and then we'll show you some of the delays that we're seeing. All right, and we've got the Zagan Bridge. You just saw that. Also, the Mass Pike starting to move freely at this point. We'll send it back to you guys at the desk. All right, Natasha, thank you for that. See you soon. We it's now so know camera. what the gunman in the deadly nightclub rampage in Turkey looks like. Authorities today released a security video image of his face as the manhunt for him continues. And we've also learned the Amer an American is among the injured. Our Christy Lee joining us from the newsroom now with more on this. Christy? Shannon, police have fingerprints and basic description of the gunman who opened fire in a nightclub in Istanbul on New Year's Eve, killing 39 and wounding dozens. Now, here is the new hazy image of the gunman's face released by Istanbul police. And they are also security camera videos available. And this one shows the gunman firing away as he approaches the club, uh, popular with foreigners. This was around 1 a.m. The terrorist appears to be armed with a long barreled weapon, which was left behind at the scene by the gunman. Now, another security video, this one shot from across the street, shows the shooter running after flashes are seen on the pavement. The shooting lasted about seven minutes minutes and a hundred shots were fired. ISIS has claimed responsibility and today security in Turkey is extremely tight. Turkish officials say they are monitoring hundreds of quote provocative social media accounts that allegedly support terrorism. Now as for the victims, nearly two thirds of the people killed were foreigners, many of them from the Middle East. But an American is among the injured, 35 year old Jake Rock, a defense contractor from Pennsylvania. As the gunman moved from victim to victim, Rock says he dove under a bench. He pretended to be dead as the gunman stood above him on that bench. Now, Rock recounts what he did after getting shot in the leg, and that recount is just chilling. We'll hear from him coming up at 5. Live in the newsroom, Christy Lee, NBC Boston. And much more to come here on NBC Boston News at 4, including police searching for graveyard vandals on the Cape, the hateful messages left on tombstones. And less than three weeks to go until Inauguration Day. New information this afternoon on President elect Trump's next round of cabinet nominees. And we want to bring you back to that breaking news as a look from Sky Ranger here. As you can see, rescuers trying to save a horse to the right of your skin, right where that tree is, just to the right of that tree, you can see a horse laying on the ground. The horse is okay. It was stuck in some ice and they were able to pull it out of the ice. They're now tending to the horse and are trying to, to bring uh, him or her back to complete health. We'll bring you the latest from Sky Ranger in Templeton after the break. Welcome back to NBC Boston News at 4. Right now, police on the Cape are looking for whoever vandalized a cemetery with anti-Semitic slurs and hateful graffiti directed at police. NBC Boston's Jonathan Cho joining us live from Barnstable following all the details. Jonathan. Yeah, Joy, six headstones defaced with graffiti. These two knocked over. All of this happening in the past week. Investigators spent hours collecting evidence near the back of Oak Grove Cemetery here on C Street. Some of the crude messages, anti-Semitic, targeting Barnstable police and another referencing the devil. 
The damaged headstones were discovered by a maintenance worker this morning. The graffiti was first reported by a man walking through last Tuesday, and police say a spray paint can and red fire extinguisher were also left behind. Police say there are no suspects at this time and need your help with this investigation. I'll have more coming up at 5.30. For now, live from Barnstable, Jonathan Cho, NBC Boston. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Less than three weeks to go now until the inauguration of Donald Trump as our country's next president. And Trump is expected to announce more cabinet nominees this week as the Republican-controlled Congress prepares to make sweeping changes to some of President Obama's signature legislation. Our Steve Handelsman has the latest from Washington. Push back from the president. Home from Hawaii, Barack Obama will go to Capitol Hill Wednesday after Congress reconvened. GOP leaders in the House and the Senate plan quick action to roll back Obama environmental regulation, cut corporate and personal tax rates, and kill Obamacare. All now possible when Obama loses the veto pen and Donald Trump is president. The taxes are coming down. Regulations are coming But Trump is increasing the worry about him as commander-in-chief. Today, with Russian diplomats in Moscow, expelled from the U.S. by President Obama to punish Vladimir Putin for allegedly hacking the U.S. election, a Trump spokesman again questioned if the Russians really did it, as the FBI and the CIA determined. Only until Hillary Clinton lost the election did they suddenly decide that this was a major thing. Now, maybe it is. Maybe it was. Trump says he will explain his claim to have better intel. I also know things that other people don't know, and so they cannot be sure of the situation. Trump claimed today, I thought and felt I would win big, but Democrats charge he's desperate not to be seen as needing Russian help. So unless President-elect Trump has his own intelligence service, uh, again, it looks like he's just winging it. Some Republicans say they're concerned. Senior Republican Trump critic John McCain says he will hold a Senate hearing on the election hack this week. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News, Capitol Hill. And still ahead here on NBC Boston News at 4 o'clock, caught on camera, severe weather wreaking havoc for stranded drivers in Minnesota, the video and the headaches that this storm is causing for millions of Americans after a long holiday weekend. All right, Joy, yeah, we're watching that storm system. All rain now in the deep south. We have severe weather watches as well. This marches up the eastern seaboard. We have the latest on its track and the timing in just a bit. What's your New Year's resolution? This little device claims a quick jolt could be the secret to kicking a bad habit. Most of our users quit their habit in fewer than seven days. Leslie Cados shows you the best ways to keep those New Year's resolutions. Tonight at 11 on NBC Boston Tonight. Welcome back to NBC Boston News at 4 o'clock. Following some breaking news just into our newsroom moments ago, we have now learned a third person has died following that huge fire in Holyoke, which we've been telling you about here on NBC Boston. Flames broke out yesterday morning at a multifamily home on Northeast Street. Two people were killed. The remains of a third person have now been found. Officials have not yet identified that victim, but we'll keep following the breaking developments. All right, also this afternoon, severe weather creating headaches for millions of people across the country who are now trying to get home after the long holiday weekend. Difficult conditions stretching all the way from Seattle, where slippery surfaces created hazardous driving conditions. You can see them there. Mm. To the Midwest, with the possibility of near blizzard conditions in the upper Midwest. And then down south, as you heard Pete mention, it is wet weather with up to five inches of rain expected in some places. Yeah, similar scene in Minnesota as well. This video out of St. Paul winter weather as you can see making for some very very frightening moments for drivers look at this uh, according to a Department of Transportation uh, official and wow look at that mm. this was a scene in St. Paul one car as you saw stranded on the side of the road another car skids out of control forcing those people stranded to really literally run for their lives police released this video as a reminder to everyone just take it slow take it slow out there driving in winter weather all right see so see all this other <laughs> weather across the country we don't have it so bad no, do we don't yes we got a cakewalk huh right? you know even with our snowstorms yeah that's all right yeah, it's been I, one uh, case in point. Don't ever get out of the car when that happens, no, by the sure. way. You're just sure. like, well, a car's broken down. They had oh, look, no choice. They had to run, though. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs>
Better to stay in it. Anyway, um, yeah, how about this weather? It's been pretty balmy today. We had the clouds increasing 40 degrees. Feels like about 37. East northeast wind at about five miles an hour. Visibility over 10 miles around greater Boston. Not bad right now. All above freezing. Our temps are right around 40 degrees or so. 39 up in Danvers right now from our exclusive weather underground network. 38 in Milton and about 37 in Dedham 40 in Waltham. What do you know? These temperatures hardly budge tonight. About 40 degrees out through the Cape and the islands will settle back into the mid and upper 30s. Not worried about any icing because the precipitation is gliding by to the south. We've had a few sprinkles down through Buzzards Bay and Cape Cod and we'll keep the clouds around for the remainder of the night. If we see anything, it'd be patchy drizzle that would pop up from time to time. Nothing too huge here. You can see this whole area of rain. I'd, I don't want to call it a mist because we did see some sprinkles out of it, but mostly a mist as it heads out over the fish. This is our main event here waiting back in the deep south. This comes up the eastern seaboard and hits us square between the eyes. But again, I think it slowly tiptoes in for tomorrow. As we watch this on the time lapse, you can see right as we get to about one o'clock. There we are. Pay dirt. A few showers in the morning, just sprinkles and then a steadier rain from one o'clock to three o'clock and you guessed it right through the evening drive until about seven. This is the heavy stuff. Obviously, when we put the yellows and the oranges to it, this is uh, almost downpour territory here, but then that moves out quickly because the storm is developing quickly and rockets out of here. So as we get into Wednesday late night or Tuesday late night, I should say in the wee hours of Wednesday morning, we're back to quieter weather. If you notice across northern New England snow hounds, we are talking about snow there and we're talking about a lot of it. Once again, Mount Washington Valley, Western Maine and northern Vermont too. Temps tomorrow in the lower 40s. It's a raw day. They're not getting really a jump on the numbers, even though we're somewhat balmy tonight. The issue is that northeast wind coming off of cold water. If we could budge the numbers a little bit, we might be able to tickle 50 degrees in Hyannis or down through Nantucket. But on the other side of the coin is chilly through Fitchburg and up through Rochester, New Hampshire and Lawrence too, with those highs barely making it to 40 as well. High pressure goes away and this again, coastal storm, surely it's a low pressure system. We have something here and we will get a big storm with a lot of wind too. That's the other side of this whole equation is that wind and that looks like it'll really, really surge tomorrow and tomorrow evening along the coastline. Rainfall amounts, we're in a drought. We've been talking about this drought for a long time now since last summer. And I think we'll get about three quarters of an inch to maybe close to an inch. The downpours are really going to help. Here's your wind out of the east northeast. Some gusts over 30 at times, but the real strong wind, it seems, comes late at night on Tuesday with gusts over 50 miles per hour, maybe even close to 60 out on Cape Cod. There's your extended forecast now. It's wet and then it's windy on Tuesday and then late week and into the weekend. Those temperatures just nose dive. We're going to climb out of the cellar as we're in the teens and single digits by Sunday morning and Monday morning. Have a good night. All right, Pete, thank you. Take a look at this. Get you back to this breaking news out of Templeton. A live look right now from Sky Ranger. That is a horse that they are tending to after they pulled it from some ice not too long ago. Horse is okay. You can see him or her moving around a little bit. They're trying to get him warmed up, and uh, and the horse is on the mend. So uh, all's well that ends well in this situation out of Templeton. The view from Sky Ranger there live from above. We'll continue to follow this story for you here on NBC Boston. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. So a mom in Arizona going to have a pretty fun, pretty unique way to tell her twins apart. They were actually born in different years. All right. So Sawyer, the first of the two, was born New Year's Eve at about 1150 p.m. His brother Everett, technically the next year, just after midnight in 2017, new mom says both the births were, quote, perfect as far as that can go. And the dad says that they could not be happier. Sawyer's going to hold that over his younger brother. I know, head right? For the rest I'm of their the lives. I'm the older one. I'm the year older than <laughs> as you. As someone older and wiser. <laughs> that does it for the News at 4. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shannon Malaire. I'm Joy Limnacker, and NBC Boston News at 5 o'clock starts right now.